In this video, we'll be learning how to balance chemical equations. This is a continuation of the balancing equations video I posted earlier. And so here we're just going to run through several different examples uh, of how you can balance equation. Just remember when you're balancing equations, you want the same number of atoms of each type, of each element, on both sides of the equation. So for example, this first reaction is already balanced. Uh, we've got one sodium on the reactant side, one sodium on the product side there. There's one chlorine here. Again, there's no subscript there, so that tells us there's one there. There's one chlorine over here on the product side. And then silver, there's one Ag, one silver there, one silver on the product side, one nitrogen, one nitrogen, three oxygens, three oxygens. All right? And so that equation was already balanced, so we didn't have to put any, uh, any coefficients, any numbers out in front. If you were to do that, it would just be ones, but usually we just leave it blank uh, if there's only one of an atom. So let's try that on this next one. Uh, this is aluminum chloride with lead to nitrate that we're, uh, we're going to be balancing here. And so we've got one aluminum on the reactant side, one aluminum on the product side. So far, so good. There's three chlorines. That's what the, what the subscript three there tells us, that the, is that there's three chlorine atoms there. On the product side, the only place chlorine shows up is over here on the far right. There's two chlorines in PBCl2. And so here we need to bring both of these up to a common number. So what can we bring both of those up to? Well, we can raise them both up to six. Kind of think of it like a, a common denominator idea. Uh, if you were adding one third and one half, you'd have to have this common denominator of six there. So to bring both of these up to six, three I can multiply by two. So I'll put a two out in front of the ALCL3. That means I have two ALCL3 units there. And then to bring this up to six total chlorines, I'm going to put a three out in front of that. That'll be three times two is six chlorines. That also gives me three leads. That three, those uh, coefficients apply to the entire formula that comes right after it there. All right, so now we can go on to the lead here. That we balanced out the, uh, the chlorines there. And we're going to go back and check on the aluminum here in a second, too. So I have one lead on the reactant side. Now, with the three out in front of the PBCL2, there's three leads on this side. So we need to get three leads over here as well. So I'll put a three out in front of that. And then there's a couple of ways that we can balance the, uh, the NO3 here. We could balance the nitrogens and oxygen separately, or we could balance it as one NO3 unit, since we haven't changed the NO3 grouping to, uh, onto the product side there. It's the nitrate ion, and it hasn't changed that at all. Uh, so you could balance this as uh, 2 times 1 times 3 is 6 nitrogens there, but there's only 3 nitrogens over here. Uh, or you could balance it as there's 2 times 3 is 6 nitrate ions there. And again, there's only 3 nitrate ions here. The 3 outside the parentheses means we have 3 of everything inside the parentheses there. And so either way we look at it, we need to have a 2 then out in front of the ALNO3 3 for that. That'll give us, again, 2 times 1 times 3 is 6 nitrogens there. 3 times 1 times 2 is 6 nitrogens there. 3 times 3 is 9 times 2 is 18 oxygens. 2 times 3 is 6 times 3 over here is 18 oxygens there. So that balances everything else. And putting a 2 in front of the ALNO3 also balances out the aluminum with the 2 that we had put earlier over here. So that equation is now balanced. All right, let's try another one. This one is a combustion reaction. This is uh, propane, C3H8, reacting with uh, elemental oxygen, makes CO2 and H2O. And so I'll start with the carbon. Uh, I've got three carbon atoms there, only one on this side. So let's put a three out in front of the CO2. That'll give us three carbons. I'm going to hold off on the oxygen. I'll balance that last. Uh, it's easier to balance uh, elements that only appear once on both sides of the equation. Notice oxygen shows up here and over here. So leave that kind of to the end, and, uh, and you'll be, it usually is easier to do that. And then I've got eight hydrogens here, only two on this side. So to bring this one up to eight, like I have there, I'm going to put a four in front of the H2O. So that balances out my, uh, my hydrogen. Now we can balance the, out the oxygen. I only have two oxygens here, and I've got three times two. There's six oxygens uh, there from the CO2, plus there's four more. Four times one is four more oxygens from the H2O. So that's six plus four is 10 total oxygens. So to get 10 on the reactant side, we'll put a five out in front of the O2. Five times two is 10 oxygens. All right, so sometimes you can leave yourself a little room. Whenever I write out my equations, I usually leave myself some space out in front just so that I've got some room to write in coefficients if I need them. I didn't need one in front of the C3H8 there. So again, if it's just a one, we usually leave it blank. All right, and then the last two are a little bit trickier. Uh, so let's try these. 
Uh, this one here, N2O5 going to NO2 and O2. So there's two nitrogen atoms on the reactant side, only one on the product side. So I'm going to start off by putting a two out in front of that. That'll balance out the nitrogen. But I run into a problem. Sometimes you got to go back and change some things around that you've already balanced because otherwise it won't work out right. I've got five oxygens on the product side. But on the, on the, I'm sorry, five oxygens on the reactant side, I've only got four plus two. Again, oxygen shows up in a couple of places there. Uh, two times two is four oxygens there, plus two more here. I've got a total of six oxygens on the product side. And again, only five here uh, on the reactant side. So I need more on the reactant side. Sometimes trial and error works, works out the best way uh, to balancing these equations. So what I'm going to do is go back and I'm going to put a 2 now out in front of the N205. Just in, You can try a 2 and then see if you can balance it. If that doesn't work, you can go back and try a 3 and see if that works. So now I've got four nitrogens on the reactant, so, uh, reactant side, but... I'm going to lose my 2 here. I'm going to cross that one off. Instead of uh, a 2 there, I'm going to change that to a 4 for that. So now I've got 4 nitrogens, 4 nitrogens, and now I've got 4 times 2 is 8 oxygens, plus 2 oxygens is 10 oxygens. Hey, look at this. 2 times 5, it's 10 oxygens there. So just changing that to a 2 and that to a 4 balances everything. I don't need to put anything out in front of the O2 then for that. All right, so that one's balanced. Let's try this last one, and this one we're going to have to do something similar. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the carbon. I've got four carbons there, and so I'm going to put a four out in front of the CO2 there. Ten hydrogens here, uh, and so I need to put a five then out in front of the H2O. Five times two will be ten to match the ten that I have there. Can you see what the problem is that we're going to run into, though? Uh, next is the oxygen. I've got two oxygens here, but again, oxygen shows up in two places here. So I have four times two is eight oxygens from the CO2, and five times one is five more oxygens from the H2O. And that adds up to 13 oxygens. Well, how can I get 13 oxygens when they only come in pairs? That's what that O2 means. I can't change that subscript. It means I can have two, four, six. I can have 12 oxygens. I can have 14 oxygens, but I can't get 13 when they only come in pairs. So if you run into something like this, go back, kind of like we did in this previous example, go back to your original substance and try doubling that and then rebalance everything. So if I take four times two, now that's going to give me eight CO2 molecules and that's 20 hydrogens here. So I'm going to need a 10 then out in front of my H2O. 10 times two will give me 20 hydrogens there. Now, cross off these here. Now I've got 16 oxygens from the CO2 and 10 oxygens from the H2O. 16 plus 10 is 26 oxygens. So now that's an even number. Now I just need to put a 13 out in front of the O2 and that equation is balanced. All right, so that's just a few examples of how you can balance chemical equations.